This is David Spears, civil engineering instructor at Texas Tech University, talking about CE 2301 statics. <clears throat> Today we're talking about moment of inertia and rotated axes and the use of Moore's circle to, uh, to show those properties. First I want to briefly talk about the basic concept of moment of inertia. Um, up here in the red I've got moment of inertia measures the spread of an area about an axis and so an example I think a basic example that shows what it really means is I have these three areas this rectangle on its side a square and a rectangle vertically all of them could have the same area but <clears throat> this one would have the smallest spread of the area about this x-axis going horizontal so it would have a small ix the square would be a little bit more spread further away from the x-axis so it would have the medium ix larger than this one but not as large as this final example three where the area is spread considerably away from the x-axis parts of it are way far away and it's going to have the largest ix the largest moment of inertia about that x-axis then <clears throat> in blue I've got here um, the same rectangle but with the x-axis and the y-axis vertically and you can see the spread about the x-axis just like this example in red here is large in fact it's the maximum moment of inertia the moment of inertia about the x-axis whereas the spread about the y-axis kind of looks like this one rotated 90 degrees so that IY is small and is in fact the minimum spread Okay, continuing over here down the right side of the whiteboard, I've got some discussion of some examples of how the moment of, there's a bunch of, there's an infinite number of moment of inertias of a certain area. If I start off with this orientation, x, y, like that, and <clears throat> in brown I've got that same rectangle in the x, y axes, but I rotate my axes 30 degrees counterclockwise to have a different axis system U and V that are rotated 30 and 30 degrees okay I've already said here IX is max and IY is min but if I rotate those axes and now I've actually turned the whole element so that the U and the V axes are oriented vertically and horizontally so I can kind of see it free and clear of the Y and the X axes I can see I have less spread about the U axis than I did about the X axis over here it's more close in to the U axis whereas if I can, can uh, compare the V axis to the Y axis over here it's instead of being oriented up and down now I have more spread than I did about the y-axis about the v-axis so IU its measure of its spread is less than IX in this case and IV the spread about the v-axis is greater than it was about the y-axis so then I continue on and I have another example where I continue rotating it and I now rotate 60 degrees from the x-axis and call that u prime and v prime and here I draw it again free and clear of the x and y axes <clears throat> I can see I've got even less spread about the u axis u prime axis than I did about the x axis or even about the u axis because it's closer in more compact to the u prime axis and IV has IV prime has now become um, greater of a spread than it was about the even about the U or the U prime U prime or the U or especially the Y axis 
So you can see that my axis, my moments of inertia, the spread measure of the spread of the area, is changing as I rotate my axis system. So I capture those concepts on Moore's circle, in which I plot the moments of inertia I on the horizontal scale, product of inertia on the vertical scale I X Y or I U V or whatever it is. So in this case, which is going to be related to the problem we had on the test, I plot, I have a circle, and I plot the maximum, or I plot two points, and then I find the center. In this case, the first orientation was the maximum and the minimum moments of inertia. Just plot that as a coordinate. Whatever that number is, just plot it there. Then I find the center as the average, and we'll do that in a second. And then I draw a circle, figure out what the radius is, and then I can go to any point on that circle, and if I'm rotating 30 degrees, as I was in this first example, in the, on the real shape, I'm rotating 60 degrees on more circle. So I can do the geometry using triangles and figure out what the plot of that is, IU. And uh, it's just a coordinate in space on that circle. Read down from there, and that is, go down to the horizontal axis, which plots moment of inertia, and you can just read off that value. I can go over horizontally to the IXY, the product of inertia axis, and figure read what IUV is. And I can follow the diagonal of the circle through the center down here to this point, which is the plot of the moment of inertia about the V axis. So you see in this first case, my IU was less than my IX, so my IX was this I max, and so IU is a smaller number to the left on this uh, horizontal axis. Similarly, I min was IY over here on the far left, and as I rotate my axes, my IV is greater than I min. I can continue that. And this is example two by rotating 120 degrees or twice 60 degrees. And now I'm at IU prime, which is smaller than I max and IU. And it's in fact over here, just read down where it intersect where that plot is on the horizontal. IUV is over here. And IV is I follow the diag IV prime is I follow the diagonal over here to this point, and I see now it's gotten even bigger. And if I keep going, you can see if I go 90 degrees, what was I min will now become I max at 180 degrees on more circle or 90 degrees on the real element, and that's what I started at. So. In summary, Moore circle shows IX, I and IXY, or moment of inertia and product of inertia, for all orientations or rotations of axes. And very important to note, on the shape, we rotate an angle theta. On Moore's circle, we rotate two times that angle.